Hey guys, welcome to Piping Engineers. So guys, in today's video, we will learn about the cooling towers. We will learn what are cooling towers, what are different types of cooling towers and how different calculations are done on the basis of cooling towers. So guys, for more videos and updates, please like, follow and subscribe to our channel. So let's begin our today's video. So guys, what is a cooling tower? So you would have seen cooling tower in your day to day life. Maybe its form is different, its name is different, but in our life, in our day to day life, we see cooling towers. So what are cooling towers? Guys, they are basically heat exchangers in which water and air come in contact with each other to lower the temperature of the water. So what happens? These are heat exchangers which are used to lower the temperature of hot water and in, each, in this system, the air is used to lower the temperature of water. The main task of cooling tower is to reject the heat into atmosphere from hot water. So basically the cooling towers are a system which takes the heat of hot water and rejects that heat into the atmosphere with the help of air. So cooling towers basically they are very inexpensive and dependable means of removing low grade heat. Makeup water is continuously added to replenish the water losses. Now uh, to uh, learn about this makeup water concept in today's video itself we have a last slide in which we will be telling how why makeup water is required and uh, for the timing we can consider that cooling tower uses some makeup water and this makeup water is really important to replenish the loss that occurs due to the losses in cooling tower. And what are the sources of uh, hot water in cooling tower? So guys, cooling towers are basic, are used in each and every most of the plants and uh, the, basically the water from processes, water from your condensers of chillers and uh, heat exchangers and industrial processes mm, that all that hot water which cannot be uh, released to the, which cannot be released openly are sent to the cooling tower and from that uh, cooling tower again the cooling cold water or the temp water with less temperature is sent back to the process and again and again this cycle continues so guys let's move on to the slides so, so uh, what let me tell you what are the different types of cooling towers so if we talk broadly we have two different types of cooling towers one of those is na natural draft and another is mechanical draft so what are natural draft cooling towers so natural draft cooling towers as you can see in this slide so these are natural draft cooling towers they are very large concrete chimneys in which uh, through which air is introduced and a large amount of fluid needs to be cooled so this type of natural draft of cooling towers you would have seen in your power plants in your nuclear power plants and other other industries where a large amount of water needs to be cooled so we use these natural draft cooling towers the next one is your mechanical draft so mechanical draft cooling towers basically they are used they are they also found their extensive use in your pharma industry your steel industry and many power plants also use this mechanical draft cooling towers so mechanical draft cooling towers the basic difference between uh, natural draft and mechanical draft is that in mechanical draft we have a fan situated either air hair or hair to introduce the air inside the cooling tower but in natural draft no cool no fan is installed as the name suggests the cooling will be done by natural means so uh, in order that the temperature of water can be lowered in natural draft we have to maintain this height approximately uh, uh, calculations are done so that the inlet temperature and outlet temperature has uh, desired by the customer can be achieved so this is the main difference between natural draft and mechanical draft cooling tower Further mechanical draft cooling towers as I told you they can be uh, in three parts one is your counter flows induced draft another is your counter flow force draft and the third one is your close flow induced draft in next slide we will learn in detail what these types of cooling towers are and guys uh, we have a different video uh, in, uh, for which you will get a link here in i button uh, in which we will uh, we have a different video on, uh, on the comparison of counter flow versus cross flow cooling towers so you can view with that video in playlist also next so what are the mechanical draft cooling towers as the name suggests as i told you mechanical draft means we are we will be using some mechanical device to introduce air in the cooling tower so this is your counter flow induced draft cooling towers so what happens in your induced draft uh, counter flow cooling tower the water is splashed from top side of the cooling tower and air is comes from bottom side so what happens the water and air they makes a counter contact so the water is coming from upside down and air is going downside the downside top 
सो दे आर मेकिंग अ दे आर मेकिंग अ काउंटर कॉन्टैक्ट विद ईच अदर एंड एंड अ फैन इज इंड्यूस्ड एट द टॉप सो दिस इज नोन एज काउंटर फ्लो इंड्यूस ड्राफ्ट कूलिंग टावर नेक्स्ट इज योर काउंटर फ्लो फ्रोज ड्राफ्ट सो वट हैपन्स इन काउंट वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन इंड्यूज ड्राफ्ट एंड फोर्स ड्राफ्ट सो इन इंड्यूज ड्राफ्ट दिस फैन क्रिएट्स अ नेगेटिव सेक्शन एंड द इट टेक्स एयर फ्रॉम इन साइड एंड एयर मूव्स फ्रॉम टॉप टू बॉटम वाइल इन फोर्स ड्राफ्ट कूलिंग टावर द लोकेशन ऑफ फैन चेंजेस एंड इट कम्स टू द बॉटम ऑफ द कूलिंग टावर सो फ्रॉम हेयर वी आर फोर्सिंग सम ड्राफ्ट वी आर फोर्सिंग एयर इन साइड द कूलिंग टावर एंड दिस एयर कम्स इन साइड विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस फैन एंड इट गोज from bottom to the top side and water comes again from top to bottom as i told you so air and water they are making a counter contact but the location of fan is changed and we can say the fan is forced uh, drafting the air inside the cooling tower so that uh, this type of uh, so the cooling achieved desired cooling can be achieved in the cooling tower and let me tell you one more thing the hot water enters from the top side of the cooling tower and cold water is taken outside from bottom side of the cooling tower we also have a video on different type of cooling tower terminologies you will get uh, the link here in i button please uh, watch that video also for more clarity on the cooling towers and the next is cross flow induced draft cooling tower so this is uh, one of the uh, largely used cooling tower uh, in most of the industries uses this type of cooling tower you can say cross flow induced draft cooling towers so what is the basic difference between this counter flow and cross flow as the name suggests uh, in counter flow the air makes a counter contact with each other while in cross flow cooling tower water enters from top you can see the water is entering from the top but air air in this cooling towers enters from the side so so the, so instead of instead of uh, having a counter arrangement the air crosses the water system so you can see the water enters from top while air is entering like this so this is making a cross between air and water and again there is a fan at the top so this is again a cross flow because the contact of air and water is making a cross here and the fan at the top is creating a negative suction that takes this cross flowed air from top, um, uh, on the top and uh, sent, uh, rejects it to the atmosphere again the water in this cooling tower uh, it is not uh, evenly distributed it is it is on the sides you can see the hot water distribution is just on the sides of the cooling tower and this this cooling tower have these levers what these levers do they facilitate the movement of air inside the cooling tower hot water is from uh, coming from top side and this cold water is com- going from the bottom side so this is uh, your cross flow induced draft in this we have two you know, one is your double flow and uh, double flow uh, double flow cross flow so if the air is entering from both the side it is known as double flow if some cooling towers also have only one side of air movement so they are known as single flow cooling tower so i guess uh, these three things i have made very clear to you moving uh, what are the different losses in cooling towers so while making the calculations and while selecting the cooling towers generally as you know water is very precious and government is making very strict norms on it so uh, there are different types of losses that occurs in cooling towers so one is your evaporation loss so what is evaporation loss as the name suggests the water will evaporate and it will go to the atmosphere hmm. so this is the evaporation loss why why this evaporation loss occurs because when hot water comes in contact with dry air so some amount of water gets evaporated uh, with the air so this evaporation loss uh, we have a empirical formula to calculate this empirical formula is 0.0085 into 1.8 into circulation water into t1 minus t2 so what this t1 minus t2 it is the temperature difference suppose your inlet water is coming at 45 degree and outlet water is going at uh, 35 degree so this t1 minus t2 will come to 10 circulation rate is the total amount of the total flow of the cooling tower that the cooling tower is taking and these are empirical values so if we multiply these all these four values we will get the evaporation loss that your cooling tower will go through next use your drift loss so again drift loss you would be as the name suggests um, so if something drifts out or something moves out of the cooling tower so it is the water that goes of the tower through wind so as i told you that water comes from top and uh, there are some uh, the, uh, and the water splashes into small pieces so uh, with the help of fast moving gear some water goes outside the cooling tower so from louvers also some water gets uh, deflected from the cooling tower so this is your drift loss so basically what while considering the losses uh, we have to consider this loss also so drift loss is loss is your 0.02% of circulating water so again this is an empirical formula and uh, well proven formula 
to calculate the drift loss in your system next is your blow down loss so blow down loss is one of the most important loss and a major loss that uh, that basically depends upon the quality of the water so the portion of circulating water is taken out of the to to tower intentionally to maintain total dissolved solids like level of circulating water so suppose your uh, some of you uh, so the water of you, uh, your water is going to some system and you know when uh, water gets starts evaporating uh, so the uh, dissolved solids level you would have seen some whitish type of level uh, or the salts started in start increasing in your cooling tower so these salts may choke your heat exchangers or your tubings of the equipments in which your water is going uh, so we intentionally take some water to maintain this total dissolved solids level so uh, uh, this loss which we the water that we take out of the cooling tower this is known as your, your blow down so it is blowed down as the name suggests so it is calculated as evaporation loss by coc minus 1 so now what is this your coc uh, this coc is your cycles of concentration so cycles of concentration again uh, when we select a cooling tower we ask the supplier to provide us a higher cycles of concentration so we ask for about 5 to 8 number of cycles of concentration so means cycles of concentration is basically after how many cycles do we need the cooling tower to uh, get blown down or to take the blow down water out so cycles of concentration how it is calculated it is calculated as the ratio of dissolved solids in circulating water to the dissolved solids in makeup water so this is how it is calculated suppose that uh, tds or the total dissolved solids um, is having uh, some some TDS ratio and the uh, water that you are adding in the cooling tower as I told you in our earlier slide uh, the makeup water that will you will be adding in the cooling tower so the both of those ratio brings your cycles of concentration so guys uh, the evaporation loss plus your drift loss plus your blow down loss when you add all these three losses you add uh, you get your makeup water so uh, these three losses makes your makeup water so this amount of water after adding uh, after getting after the addition of these three will be uh, needs to be added into the cooling tower at a periodic basis so that cooling tower doesn't uh, get uh, run out of water or there is a shortage of water inside the cooling tower or or inside your system so uh, guys i hope you would have liked the video and i would have given you um, most of the brief knowledge about cooling towers what is what are they and how they works so guys for more videos and updates please like follow and subscribe to our channel thank you guys thank you for watching the video